What's up, everybody? My name is Joe Brown. This is the Heresy Financial Show. And in a not so surprising turn of events, Russia recently announced that it is considering opening up its payments for oil and gas to other currencies, to the national currency of the buyer. And in addition to that, both gold and and Bitcoin. And so today we are going to discuss again why this is not really that surprising. Number one, in light of everything that's going on today, like with all the sanctions, but number two, in light of these long-term historical cycles with the rise and fall of empires, global powers, and global reserve currencies. And number three, what this potentially means for the future, the near future of the global financial system and global reserve currencies. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so if you haven't seen the headlines, Russia did recently announce that it's considering accepting uh, Bitcoin and potentially gold and the local currency of the buyer in exchange for oil and gas because of the sanctions that has been placed on them by the rest of the world. And so they're getting squeezed and they're looking for ways to get their hands on other forms of money for the stuff that the rest of the world desperately wants and needs. The chair of Russia's Duma on energy, his name is Pavel Zavalny, he said that the national fiat currency of the buyer is being considered to be accepted for oil and gas. He said that they've been proposing to China for a long time to switch to settlements in the national currencies for rubles and yuan. With Turkey, it would be lira and rubles. In fact, with China, their Gazprom, their uh, uh, oil pipeline that is going, uh, it's either oil or natural gas, I can't remember at the moment, but they're going to China with that, that has already been, uh, that, that massive deal has already been denominated in euros instead of either rubles or yuan. What's happening here is in the midst of the uh, whole entire world looking at this right now, a lot of the world is looking at this situation and saying, I like the fact that Russia is getting sanctioned. However, I want to make sure that if push comes to shove, that doesn't happen to me. So the rest of the world is kind of looking at this situation and saying, we might need to diversify away from the dollar a little bit. Also, because the rest of the world is looking at this and saying, hey, if sanctions go on 100% and we can't get oil and gas because you can't get oil and gas anymore with uh, dollars from Russia, which right now you still can, but let's say that's cut off completely. Well, Russia controls enough global food and energy where if they get cut out 100%, that's going to cause too much pain for Europe. So Europe right now might be looking at this and thinking, hey, we need a way around this. So even though they don't like what Russia is doing, they might be still willing to do trade with Russia for the things that they desperately want and need with currencies or uh, forms of money like gold or Bitcoin uh, outside of the dollar. And like I said, it's not just fiat currencies that they're looking at. They said that they'd be open to accepting Bitcoin as well. Now, Bitcoin as a payments network, this is something that could be rolled out very easily. The infrastructure is already there. The payments can't be reversed. It's available for anybody. Large transactions can go through relatively cheaply and easily and quickly. And so this is something that could provide a way for anybody to do business with Russia that wants to regardless of any sanctions by any country on earth. And he also said that friendly countries can use gold. If you look at the long-term cycles of history put together by Ray Dalio in his new book, The Changing World Order, you can see that from a number of factors, we are at a turning point right now, or it, we, it looks like we're at a turning point in the changing world order. Both from a time cycle perspective, we're nearing the end of a uh, of the United States being the global reigning superpower, but also from a number of indicators that indicate whether a country is rising or falling, it does look like we're at a turning point in the world where the world is going to start looking to use other forms of money as its global reserve currency, which means we're likely entering into a time period where the global financial system and the reserve currency might be more fractured than one. Yes, it's a winner take all game and usually the strongest one emerges on top. However, that's not going to happen immediately. And in the transition phase, it's very likely that we see more of a fractured global financial system with multiple forms of money being used for trade all around the world for international trade until the rest of the world finds the new one that it wants to use most. This is what happens 
very often throughout history. You can go back and track it. And that's why uh, the United States dollar emerged as the most recent global reserve currency because it was the hardest one available. The rest of the world said, you know what? We can't trust any of our own currencies. So let's trust the dollar because it's the hardest currency. None of us can control it. So we can all trust each other with using it because none of us are going to be controlling it. The US is controlling it. And it's as good as gold because it's backed up by gold. Now, ultimately that deal didn't turn out very well for the rest the world long term as the United States confiscated the gold reserves of the entire world in 1971. However, this is normally what happens. The world will get together and countries through their own uh, selfish interests will look at this and say, in order to make sure that both parties are benefited as much as possible and neither of us can take advantage of each other so that there's this trust for international trade, we're going to just default to the strongest currency, the hardest currency, the one that can be manipulated the least. And as the rest of the world looks on what's happening right now, everybody is looking at this and thinking, hey, you know what? I might need to gather some foreign currencies for myself, some build up my foreign currency reserves so that if that currency becomes stronger, that currency becomes the one that I need to get my hands on in order to get food or energy or import from the largest manufacturer or exporter on earth, China, they might be looking at this and thinking, hey, I need to store up on some of these other currencies because it's very possible some of these countries that have what I need won't accept the payment that I've been using the dollar for very much longer. All right, so I'm literally in the middle of editing this video that you're watching right now, and I just saw announced that within the next couple of days, by the time you're watching this, it may have already happened, it is expected that India will have a new agreement with Russia to do a rupee ruble arrangement to be able to buy and sell oil and gas between India and Russia. Now, keep in mind, uh, between India and China, you're basically looking at half the world's population, not quite, but close. And uh, also keeping in mind that much of Africa is aligned heavily with China and uh, certain countries in Africa within the next 50 years will have more people than China. Um, just looking at the raw demographics, the number of people involved in these, uh, these changing alliances, um, Ray Dalio always says the changing world order. Um, these are big deals and um, it might, who knows, we'll look back and look and see if these sanctions are effective. Uh, they'll be effective at something, that's for sure. And the question is, are they going to be effective at uh, cutting people off from using the dollar, which is going to force potentially the rest of the world into using something else instead and potentially speed up the demise of the dollar instead of keep it on top for longer. We'll see. So we'll see what happens. Ultimately, we do have to wait and see whether this results in countries having to stock up on gold and use it for trade or at least denominate the uh, prices of what's being traded in gold, whether countries start using Bitcoin as payments in order to get around sanctions. We'll see at this point, nothing has happened. It's all just talk, but the rest of the world is on notice right now and looking around and thinking, what do we need to do to make sure that we're not subject to these sanctions at some point in the future? make sure we're set and we have what we need to get what we want and need should the time come. The only thing that is certain is that the dollar's reign is coming to an end. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.